night on the campus of Fredericktown High School as the Lady Freddies look to avenge an earlier season loss to the Lady Trojans of Centerburg. It's Freddyburg Part 2 and it's coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have and it's coming your way next. I'm Travis Big League Berardi. Welcome to our high school volleyball broadcast pregame show coming up next. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premium
Premier Card Processing Solutions and Services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Find a cheerleading camp next to the abandoned insane asylum? It's like throwing good blood away. 50% of Americans like watching blood get spilled in horror movies, but only 3% donated. Now that's scary. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fredericktown High School in Fredericktown, Ohio, for tonight's Freddieburg Part 2 matchup between the Lady Trojans of Centerburg on the road against the Lady Freddies of Fredericktown. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Big League, Big Mac, Berardi, alongside the illustrious Garrett Parlett. I can say it for once. First time we're on a volleyball match this year, my friend, but uh, should be a good one. Yeah, Trav, it's great to be here. I believe this is our first match together all season, yeah. regardless of sports. So a great opportunity for us to gel here, Trav, and a great matchup we do have on hand here between two KMAC rivals. Yeah, and it's a special night, too, for the F Lady Freddies. It is senior night, and momentarily we'll get you down to the court for the senior night festivities. But this was uh, the Lady Freddies looking for some payback. Uh, Freddie Berg Part 1 was pretty darn competitive with Centerberg going Three sets to one, 25-17, 25-22. Frederictown took set three, 25-17. Centerberg taking set number four, 25-22. Uh, whenever you get Centerberg, Frederictown, it doesn't matter if it's water polo or <laughs> tiddlywinks, these two teams are going to be going <laughs> at it. Yeah, we're, we're set for a great matchup here, Trav, especially on senior night here for the Freddies. They're going to bring it, you know, they're going to bring the mojo. They're going to bring everything they got here to defend home court and defend it. I'm not sure if they call this the cage, Trav, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it the cage here for, for myself. But they got a chance here, you know, to knock off Centerberg and both fighting for that second, spot, second place spot in the KMAC right behind Cardington Lincoln. And we will talk more about that after the senior night festivities, which are about to begin. So I'm going to quiet down for once and we'll take it down <laughs> to the to the court for those festivities Thank you. 
So there you have it. The seniors recognized by not only Fredericktown, but a nice gesture by the Lady Freddies to acknowledge Centerburg as well, G. It's always great, Trav. When you know we got great sports and shit ship out here between two great rivals here in some KMAC volleyball. You take a look at the seniors there from Fredericktown. We're in for a great matchup here, Trav. It's gonna be an exciting one. It was an exciting one the first time I know you were there. It ended up going four sets, so uh, it feels as if every volleyball game that I'm at, though, Trav, it goes to five sets, okay. so. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's get right into the pregame. Let's take a look at our spot team spotlights. Uh, first for Centerburg, they're 15 and four, nine and two. Their only two losses are to KMAC champion Cardington. They clinch an outright second place in the KMAC with a win. They are the number four seed in the Central One District, the Mount Vernon district they'll play either a 14 seed or a 17 seed on the 22nd which is next Saturday and they are hitting 151 as a squad now that first Freddie Berg matchup was very important for both of these teams because it actually determined the seeding for these two squads this is Fredericktown 15 and 5 8 and 3 in the KMAC their two losses, Cardington, and then the third one to Centerburg. They are the fifth seed in the Central One District. They take on number 20, Utica, in a sectional semi. Hitting 148 as a team, and like we said, on August 15th, they fell three sets to one to Centerburg in a very competitive match. Back and forth affair, but I think we're going to pause here, Trav, and head to the floor for the National Anthem. Our Star Spangled Banner. Let's take you down to the floor. Great job by those two to honor America here. Got to love the, the live singing. I think every, yeah. almost every volleyball match I've been to, somebody sang the national anthem, which is awesome. Yeah, it's great to have a rendition, especially live in person. i seen one at Willard with a, a, a guitar trap. It was phenomenal, oh, too. The, the so. sec, uh, district basketball yeah, last so year, yes. It's always great when somebody you know performs for, for us for the national anthem. Uh, let's take it back down to the floor now for our roster players for tonight. First, for the Lady Trojans, Joe Ring, Orndorff, Johnson, Weisbrode, McCombs, Kennedy, Joe Ring, Marshall, Skillman, Johnson, Glenn, Sands, 
Farrell Joyner under head coach Abigail Boudinot. Lady Trojans just missed out on a KMAC championship. They fought with Cardington in that second match, but Cardington just too strong. We've had multiple Lady Trojans get MVPs as well this year, not just one. I know I've had Kennedy Glenn and Stella Weisbrod for ours, and we've had a couple others. We had Kennedy Glenn when we covered them versus Worthington Christian, but Autumn Kennedy also had a great game versus Worthington Christian. But you mentioned it, Trav. Both these teams, you know, kind of hanging on in the KMAC, trying to fight for that second place. They just couldn't get over the hump that Cardington Lincoln was, and they swept them. Cardington Lincoln did against Centerburg the first time. They fought in the second one. That went to four sets, which is not able to get over top. They got a chance to beat Fredericktown here on the road here tonight, however. Now taking a look at the Fredericktown roster players, Mullins, Partington, Bryant, Carpenter, Sipes, Bouton, Bouton, Bryant, Blakesley, Foster, Stanbrook, Rose, under head coach, Cassandra, Vaughn. So we are just about ready to go, G, and uh, a couple players that I wanted to key on tonight. First for Centerburg, Gwyn Sands. 147 kills, second on the team, a 38.4 kill percentage. She's hitting 211 and also leads the team with 48 blocks. And you want to see somebody that has that complete game on your side. Well, Trev, Fredericktown, they're on a five-game win streak coming in. And I was taking a look back. On three of those games, Trev, they swept their opponent. Mm -hmm. Three of those were against Danville. Gahana and Mount Gilead. Then in, against Northmore, they went to four sets. I see them the first time they played Northmore. I believe they also went to four sets. Then they played in, in a tough contest against Johnstown Monroe. That went to five sets. So coming in here, maybe a little bit of fatigue. However, still riding hot on that five-game win streak, and a lot of that has been because of Jillian Bouton. Bouton, 129 kills, second on the team for the Lady Freddies, 38.9 kill percentage, hitting 298, which leads the team, and she – is second on the team with 49 blocks. So there you go, multiple players that can do not only one or two things, but you know three or four to keep your team in it. And both of those players really do well when they are up on the net. Yeah, Bowden, second on the team in blocks, as you mentioned, Trav. And last time I seen her, she was a force to be reckoned with up there near that net. Nobody could get anything past her. And of course, as long as, as, long as her and Rose are up there, it's gonna be a tough time for Centerburg to get the ball over top of the net. And we are underway. Fredericktown with the first serve overpass, and it is out of bounds. Lady Freddy's with the first point of the night. It's one nothing. And this is a great chance for me, Trav, to learn some of these volleyball terms. I've been Storm's kind of been calling a couple games with you. He's kind of been teaching me a little bit on the fly, so I'm excited for our first yummy ball here tonight. There's a yummy right there. <laughs> Flick down and finished. Jillian Bouton right there. Our player spotlight immediately getting in on it. It's 2-0. Yeah, she was our MVP the last time we were down here. Travis, a big one here from Centerburg as they cash in. And then on the other side, Gwen Sands with the finish as you take a look at the CES Credit Union replay in system. Right side finishes it off. It's 2-1. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be teaching you some of these terms. I learned a couple this year as well, so you, you, you'll get you'll get schooled, my friend, in a good way. I'm glad to you know put the thinking cap on the learning cap, as that one is going to be out of play. So Fredericktown will cash in and extend their lead to two. Three one. I'll teach you what a joust is. Don't know that term. Campfire, also as Storm would say, a fire pit, which I you could say say either or, I guess. <laughs> Swing to the back. That one from Kennedy Glenn. On the other side, a dink over. Big block. And it stays in bounds. So Fredericktown, great start by them as you look at the double block. Bouton once again into that. It's 4-1. Another block, but it's pushed over. Left side, big swing and a finish. 
Grace Sipes on that left side going full tilt, hitting it to the back line in a 5-1 lead. How big would it be, Trav, for the Lady Freddies here at home on senior night, be able to get a first set win? How, how, how much do you value a first set win? Because me and Storm talk about it a lot. I think that we value it pretty highly, especially when you're the underdog, and in this case, Fredertown. I guess you could call them that, but it is, should be a toss-up game. Well, especially on an occasion like this tonight where it's senior night, you want to – you know, you want your seniors right. to go out on a high note at home. So, you know, getting that first set will be a lot more important for them than for Centerburg. And that's blocked and down. And who else? Once again, Bouton and Sipes, they are controlling that net, flicking it down. Looking like Vaughn Miller out there. Yeah, Sacking they look, they look like he came in a tumbo out there. You try to go up for a poster dunk, and Bouton just swatting it out of there, swatting it down, and staying inbounds too. So it would result in the point as Fredericktown up seven-one here early. This is going to be a free ball, and Centerberg will get a chance to maybe get back on the board, and they will. Kennedy Glenn once again. They went for that fake, and she goes up and gets the kill. So it's seven-two here. Early on first set. Katie Johnson will serve for the Lady Trojans. If for Centerburg, if they can pull out a set one victory, it kind of like quiets the mood as that out of system play will not get over and it'll make it 7-3. But, you know, Centerburg can, you know, kill that momentum completely with a set one win. But for Fredericktown on the other side, it's just a complete 180. They can just build off of that momentum and continue to thrive. Last time I got to see Centerburg was against Worthington Christian where they went to four sets. They probably could have won that one in a three-set sweep, but there was, you know, I think I believe it was the fourth set where they kind of just fell, or the third set, excuse me, where they kind of just fell asleep. They become a little lackadaisical. So coming back here, they are, we're down 7-1, now 4-7. So beginning to march into enemy territory on the Centerburg. You Trojan. saw Sands get that big block. Cross shot stays in. Nicely done once again by Sipes. Those are the fun shots you like to see, those cross-court shots that just tuck inside the line. Pinpoint accuracy. It's got to be one of the toughest shots in volleyball, if you want to call it that, Trav. That in the corner, the back corner, those are the tough ones too. Pushed over to Fredericktown. Another chance for Sipes off the net, but down, and it'll be a point for Centerberg. It's 8-5. So it looks like Centerberg's calmed down now. They've gotten into a rhythm. Only down three. You've got to be happy with yourself if you're a Centerberg Trojans fan. They were able to at least stop that bleeding early. Fredericktown came out hot, and this one they're going to say stays in play. Let's take a look at the replay, see if it actually did. I believe it did. Yep. Now, here's a question for you, Trav. I don't know if you know the answer to this. What if the ball is like half and half? It just has to touch the, touch line. the line. Just ten. has to touch the line yeah. to be in. It's like tennis. You know how they gotcha. have those replays yeah. and stuff where if it barely touches the line, it counts. Yep. Dinked over and down. Great adjustment there by Kennedy Glenn. It, just those last second adjustments, too, is what, you know. And I feel like that's going to be one of, the, one of the toughest things to be able to, you know, guard and be able to block up there is when they kind of have that change of place, place play, when they can just kind of dink it over and kind of float it to a spot. And Glenn able to capitalize on that. Now she gets it again with an ace. First ace of the night for Centerberg, and it's a two-point set here. She'll go for another one. In system. Blocked, but on Centerberg's side, and Fredericktown gets that three-point lead back. Maya Bryant. Gets in on the action. And how many of those have happened tonight just where it falls on the side of Centerburg, even though when they're able to block it, Fredericktown able to capitalize off of it, make this a three-point game. It's all about just the force and the physics of the ball. Is that one just off the fingertips of Fredericktown and behind them. Autumn Kennedy gets in on the action. And I believe when we were at Centerburg, Trav, Autumn Kennedy did sing the national anthem too and then went in and played and then got a big win. So... Very versatile athlete Kennedy is. Like Booby Miles can do it all. <laughs> Great dig there. However, Fredericktown with another chance. Swing back line stays up. 
cross court. That's Amani Marshall, and she gets the finish. And just like that, it's a one-point set, 10-9. Back and forth contest we got here early, Trav. Fredericktown could have pulled away. You know, they're up 7-1. Centerberg able to fight back into it, make this a one-point match. Stella Weisbrod with the serve. Back set, off the block, stays alive for a moment, but out in Fredericktown, back up two. Man, I haven't seen Friday Night Lights in a while. Booby Miles, and he can pass. Trav, I'm going to I've never seen it. You have to. That's I, The TV show is even like I've great, seen too. It. No, I've seen the movie. It's just been so long that I, 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 I've definitely seen it. Now, now that you say it. That shot mishandled and into the net. Fredericktown back up three. I remember when it came out in theaters, it was 2005, my senior year. And I was a, a senior on a football team, too, and we went and saw it, and me and a couple of football players, and we cried at the end, just the way that movie ended. Okay, now I'm getting it. It's with Billy Bob Thornton. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. That movie's well, fantastic. Great swing and finish. Ella Bouton joining her sister on a scorebook. It was a one-point set, now a 3-0 run as Fredericktown back out by four. Taylor Bryant with the serve, and it's an ace. Really good movie. And then the uh, series as well is on NBC for, I think, six seasons. Hmm. Yeah, that's – I know we never have time to do anything because we're covering so much <laughs> sports throughout the year, but <laughs> if you do have a chance to binge something, it'd be Friday Night Lights. Lady Trojans looking to get back on the board. Marshall off the net, stays alive. Fredericktown with a chance. Gets it back over to the center bird. Little net play going on right there. And finally finished off. Jillian with the kill. Big time 5-0 run here from the Lady Freddies. Extend their lead to six. Got a chance to try and pull away here. Let's see if they can continue to do what they're doing. It's going to be an overpass, but good adjustment by Clara Johnson. It'll turn into a free ball and a chance for Centerberg. Marshall from behind her head gets it over. That's going to be four hits on Fredericktown, and Centerberg will get a point. They're actually going to call it a double hit, so 15-10. I believe that was Marshall, Trav, reaching back like OBJ yeah. to get that with the one hand. I've seen that from her a lot. She's aged. <laughs> Very flexible. If I did that, I'd throw a couple muscles out in my back. Just not like we were back in high school, G. Well, maybe you. You're not that far removed. Me, though? Eh, not going to happen. Is Gwen Sands gets another kill. So two in a row makes it 15-11. Fredericktown in set number one on the alumni roofing scoreboard. Seems as if every time Fredericktown begins to you know, get a big lead and begin to pull away, Cinderberg has just the right sauce to get back into things. Now, just a four-point game, but this one just out. You hate to see that. Free points given right back. I want to welcome everybody watching live and free on the OH Report Facebook and YouTube. Hello to Robin Anderson. Let go get them, Lady Trojans. Thank you all for watching. Give us a shout-out. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll shout you out. As Fredericktown gives it right back. Back to back. Service errors makes it 16-12. Can't believe it's already tournament time for volleyball. Next week starts that for volleyball and soccer. Okay, now we're just getting, you have it. No, you have it. Three straight errors. Mackenzie Weaver somewhere is cringing on that. But yeah, two weeks left or a week and a half left in the regular season for football. This is the final week for soccer and volleyball and we're gonna be running all around Northern and Central Ohio for tournaments. It always seems as if we're waiting and waiting and waiting in the summer and then boom, it hits, and then it's just like we don't have time to kind of stop and understand what's happening. It's already in, what are we at, almost mid-October? Yeah, Halloween's Fubai. coming up. Freddy's with a chance to extend. A little dink and down. Sometimes it doesn't take a very hard shot to get the point, G. I think it's almost harder to guard that, that, that kind of play. You know, if you foul them right there, just able to use their, you know, their smarts, drop it into place with a little bit of a dink, and 
Cinderberg kind of caught off guard by it as they're trying to respond. This one's Marshall, and it is going to fall. So Cinderberg able to respond and make this just a six-point game. Nice back set. That's one of the most impressive things about volleyball that I like too is the ability to set behind yourself and still have it perfect for the kill. 19-13. Trojans need a run here if they want to get back into this opening set. They, lead, they trail by six. Big swing and finish as Fredericktown five points away. Good luck trying to get a hold of that one, Trav. Too much velocity for Centerberg to get underneath that and dig it up. Now, Fredericktown just five points away from taking this set one win. Bouton into the net, though, gives it right back. So, if all the volleyball teams that you've seen, who do you think has a, a good shot at making a run? Ooh, that's a good question, Trav. Um, this will be a free ball. From the best hit, wow. Best teams that I saw would be Centerberg's up there, uh -huh. Fredericktown's up there. So these two on the floor up there, Colonel Crawford and Carey, and Carey swept them when I was up there. Uh, those are probably, I would say, the best four teams that I've seen so far this season. Well, what if I told you that Centerberg and Fredericktown is that serve is out of bounds and Fredericktown stays to within six, that Centerberg and Fredericktown are the top two seeds in their district bracket, and they would meet for a district championship if things were to work out. I think they got a good chance to work out, Trev. Wouldn't be surprised if we got an all KMAC district. Like, like softball? <laughs> yeah. Five softball district championships. That dink stayed alive. Centerberg with a chance. Weisbrode blocked. Into the net and down. Centerberg down five. I remember that. That was softball because I'm pretty sure I covered Fredericktown and they won. Yes. That was at that one field where there's like eight fields and the fences and stuff. That was at Cardington and Centerberg. Like, Centerberg, yeah. yeah. There were six KMAC teams playing for district championships, but one of them was a matchup of KMAC versus KMAC. Cardington ended up going to a state final four. That shot's too long. Centerberg still creeping back here. But, you know, as always in the Central District, there's two different districts, so you can, you can have lower seeds be, you know, make it through. So right. four and five in that district. It's Fredericktown, three points away. Uh, you know, you have other teams with a chance to do it. So number four, Centerberg, number five, Fredericktown, the two highest seeds on that side. And they will possibly meet for a district championship. And then... In a regional semifinal, if you look down further, the likes of Colonel Crawford in the Attica District would meet them in a regional semi. That's tipped and down. And Lady Freddie's looking to finish out this set as Centerberg takes the first time out. So this is what the bracket looks like right now. Centerberg, they took the bye as the four seed. They'll take on the winner of Columbus Tree of Life Christian, the 14 seed, or Columbus Afrocentric. That'll be at Centerberg. Fredericktown. They did not take the bye. They'll play in a sectional semi against 20th seeded U uh, Utica on the 18th at 6 o'clock. So both teams will have sectional championships at home. So they both have the choice to take the bye, Trav, and you can elect to, to not. Yeah, in this bracket, there's you could take five teams could take a bye. Now, now how do you feel about, so you said Fredericktown didn't take it, Centerberg did take it? And I was wrong, actually. The number one seed in Fairbanks is in that, would be a district semifinal opponent for Fredericktown. Centerberg, they are the highest seed. The next two highest are Worthington Christian and Madison Plains. So a little bit of a tougher district here, but yeah, you can, it's, it's the same in basketball, too. You can, right. if your, dis, your bracket allows you to, you can take the bye, but the higher seeds get that first. And that's what the voting by coaches is so important. It's Weisbro blocked, but dug up. And it'll be pushed over. Centerberg not going away quite yet. But the Lady Freddies give it right back. You know how set points, seven set points. So the, the coaches, they did on Saturday. They voted 
and whoever got the most votes is your number one seed. That number one seed then gets to select as that's blocked and down, and we'll continue this conversation after the break. Fredericktown takes set one, 25-17. We'll take a break, be back with set number two, live and free on the OH Report. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. I'm Travis Big League Berardi. Catch me every week with my Country Roads rankings. We'll go over the small school top 10 football schools here in the area. Twenty-five, seventeen. The Lady Freddies take set number one in Freddie Berg Part Two. Travis Berardi alongside the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And let's get back to bracket talk with Travis Lenardi Berardi. So, in the Central District, pretty much each of the four divisions have multiple districts because it's the Central District, so they have more Columbus schools and everything. The coaches will vote one through, say, there's 35, 40 teams. They go one through 40. Each coach rank ranks it. Whoever gets the most votes gets the number one seed. That team will then decide, do I want to take this bracket or the other bracket, as well as what position on the bracket. Do you want to play in a sectional semifinal or do you want to get the bye? I was telling you during the break, I think the number two seed actually has the better choice because, one, they know where that one is so they can avoid them. Right. And, two, they still get that. So there's maybe at the top eight or nine teams – have that choice to take the bye or get a sectional semi, and then it goes from there. So if you're in the top five in the Central District, you really have – you're able to play yourself maybe into a regional if one and two, some of the high seeds, play each other, kind of like East Knox Boys basketball last year. They were, I think, a four or five, and they got – they avoided. They went to a bracket where everybody else didn't and were able to win a district championship. So that's how it kind of plays out for soccer, for volleyball – and for basketball. So, Trav, say, say a two. No, I'm thinking about this. What if a two's like, I want to play one early? Uh, they Let, can, let's get that out of the way now. So, so if, say the one takes that bye, the two would place themselves in that sectional semifinal. Does that happen a lot? Not normally. Because I would think not, but I, that was just playing. Or they, it would be playing some, the opposite. You'd, also, you'd see something. That shot's long. Fredericktown takes the first point. Um, you would see where they'd stay on the same bracket, but they'd meet, they'd set themselves up to meet in a district, district. championship or maybe a district semifinal. Gotcha. You'd never see. <laughs> that, I mean, that's that's gutsy. that's just a different logic. That's what I would do. It's like, I mean, if you know, if you got a lot of confidence, let's just do it now. That shot out of bounds, and Centerberg ties it. Well, I mean, if you have, if you're riding momentum that way, and the other team maybe. Hit has a player that's out for a couple weeks or something, maybe you would do that, but I, I don't. I rarely see that. I'll have to look at the brackets and see if anybody actually <laughs> tried. I do. I, that's, inter that's an interesting point you make. But here's another point from the tournament talk, Trav. Okay. What do you think about taking the bye and not taking the bye? Uh, I would not I take the bye. It just depends on when your last game is. Nice push over and finish by Gwen Sands to give Centerberg the lead, 2-1. to one. Um... It depends on when your last game is, when your last match is. If, if maybe if you're dinged up a little bit, and you want to get a week's off, week break, then you do that. Or if you had your, you know, match set up, is that serve too strong? Or if you had like you had a match scheduled for 
you know, the end of the week where you get two or three days off, you might not do it. I know in basketball there's a couple coaches that always decide, I don't want to get any type of break. I'll play in that sectional semi against, even if it's a ba uh, not a good team, they still get that, you know, that play. It, it's really the coach's philosophy. If they want to get that extra break, it, their path, as that shot's too strong, center bird back up 3-2. You know, if your path is a little bit easier than others, maybe you want to take a break or, you know. Right. It goes by seeding, too. If you're a higher seed, I mean, we saw, you know, girls basketball, Shelby, yeah. Lady Whippets, they always, took, they always take that first uh, game because they don't want the long break. You never know what that can do. Little Dink stays alive and sets up a big swing and finish. And there right there, my friend, is a campfire. Take a look at the replay and you'll see it. A campfire is when the ball drops around a circle. Gotcha. You saw that circle, kind of like people sitting around the yep. campfire. Or as Storm would say, a fire pit, which is the same thing. You're sitting around a fire, fire pit, pit now. Gotcha. Although I know like the likes of Mackenzie Weaver don't like that because it's newer and she's old, an old school 25-year-old for some reason. But anyway, that shot into the net. And Fredericktown leads 4-3, but still haven't really seen a joust, though. No, a joust not a, well, I'll show you if, if it happens here. I do have one more question for you, Trav, on the brackets. Okay. Uh, I, know, I know you're our expert. That's off the tip, but dug up. We'll get to that here in a oh, second. Yeah, I'll wait till I have this possession. Overpass. That's a joust. When two people going on one side, on either side of the net, when they're going at it together, that's the joust, as you saw right there. Yep. So but that answers that. But can, now, now your question, sir. Yeah, uh, you asked me this a little bit earlier, Trav, in the first set about wh which team I thought was the best that I saw so far. Headed uh -huh. in, you know, tournament time, almost here for, you know, Lady Volleyball. You've seen a lot more volleyball, Trav. You're much well-versed into it. What's the best team you saw so far? I, I think I know your answer, but I just want to kind of hear it. Well, not only because they – they had a little bit of my heart from last year, but Monroeville is very, very good. They have three freshmen that have over 150 kills. So it's not only – and they brought back Maddie Daniel, who finished second in school history in a season, only behind uh, another girl that played last season. And she has a chance of breaking that record this year. So having her back, having one of the best liberos in the area as well, that's – long and makes it 5-5 five, five and all these names are slipping my mind so I have to I have to look this you caught me a little bit off guard there which is all right but um yeah it's it's Monroeville they they have five losses but they're literally they've lost uh Mohawk close Seneca East close so that swing doesn't matter if it comes back over it has to stay in but um Mohawk, who won a Northern 10 championship. Seneca East, who finished high up there. Those are two losses. Vermillion, who's in D2, they lost in three sets. So they played some really good competition. As that's out, and another Centerburg point. But Monroeville has the likes of Lily White, who is the best libero in North, maybe in all of Division IV volleyball, actually. She is like a human vacuum cleaner. And I mean it that even if it's three feet away, she will somehow dive and keep it up. That's, that's what you need in a libero. And then multiple freshmen that have over 100 kills. Um, Madison Ryber has 160 kills for Monroeville. Um, Alexa Adams has 129. That goes along with 377 by Maddie Daniels. So it's, it's not just one player that can get you there. And that's what you need in the tournament is multiple people so – Another, you know, an opponent's squad doesn't focus on just one. That's the same with these two teams as well. You have multiple s scorers on this team to where it can be spread out. Right. So that's why that's my long-winded answer on Monroeville. <laughs> but in the Central District, you know, if Fredericktown can get an upset in the district semifinal, we could very well see a Freddieburg matchup for a district championship. And then you never know. As the Lady Trojans shot out a cannon here in this second set kind of I think that first set woke them up yeah they came in here they were a little asleep Trav you know not that long of a bus ride but still long day coming in to see tonight against Fredericktown they, they now uh, they've woken up uh, they got the three-point advantage here early 
make that four points now as Centerbird beginning to kind of put it on the Lady Freddies. And a timeout by the Lady Freddies. I want to give a couple shout outs first. Regina Sipes, let's go Freddies, you got this. Brian Skaronski, watching from the friendly skies in between Charlotte and Baltimore. Who won set one? Because I'm dumb and I forgot to put who won the first setup on the scoreboard. Thank you for nonchalantly saying that to me, Brian. And <laughs> hopefully your flight is well. How would undefeated Mohawk, who beat Monroeville, not be the best team in the area, Big Mac? Because Big Mac did not see them. And if you would have heard the question, Mr. Skaronski, G asked of the teams that I have seen. Mohawk, though, would not be in the same district as... Monroeville. Monroeville will be with Seneca East. Mohawk will be in a different one. I believe Mohawk's D3 as now, well. Now, I have seen Seneca East. I saw them against Buckeye Central. This was very early in the season, but I know they defeated them. I know Buckeye Central hasn't been, been great the past couple seasons. This year, they wasn't as great as they typically are used to be in girls' volleyball, but Seneca East beat them, I think, for the first time since 2018. So we'll, we'll see if Seneca East has anything to say about those Monroeville Eagles, Trav, but I have not got to see Mohawk so far this season at all. Yeah, Mohawk is very good, though, from what I have heard. Big swing stays alive. Both teams just going full force right now. This is going to turn into a free shot. Lady Trojans the chance. Marshall, but it's a double hit. And that makes it 10-7 here in set number two is the Lady Trojans looking to get back into it. So this is what Mohawk has to go to is that was, that completely caught Centerberg off guard. That little low flying serve that just dropped off the face of the earth as it crossed the net. I think they might have been expecting it to hit the net. That, that might be as well. It's, it's the perfect shot yeah. if you want to serve. Another joust. One by Centerberg, and they get the point. Makes it 11 A's. We take a look at the replay brought to you by CES Credit Union. Uh, Mohawk, them and Carey. Mohawk the one seed, Carey the two seed in the Mount Blanchard sectional in Division Four. Carey's tough. I saw them, they swept Colonel Crawford. They were at home, but I mean, they dominated. That was never even close. Marshall off the deflection. Makes it 12-8. This is kind of a flip-flop of the first set, G. Centerberg now going up a few points. Fredericktown getting a point or two. Centerberg answering. It's been a back and forth the fair, Trav. We saw Fredericktown come out early. They were on fire here on senior night. Fired up. Lady Freddies were doing whatever they wanted. But now Centerberg, they kind of got their legs back underneath them. Kind of showing why, you know, they're, they're second in the K-Mac for a reason. They've defeated this Lady Freddies team once already this season. But this one's going to drop. In a perfect spot, it's the Freddies. Narrow this down to just three. You know what that was, G? Campfire. That was called the announcer Dang jinx. <laughs> as Maya Bryant, as you're talking all about Centerberg, just flips it down and makes it 12 to 9. <laughs> Welcome to the party, bud. Hey, also one I really thing. thought it was. It was close. It was there close. wasn't enough was people. Uh, also, I'm glad Bryant's in the skies and he didn't get caught in Charlotte for the seventh time this year. That place is just a nightmare to go through, and I'm glad he's on his way to Charlotte. Get yourself some crab cakes. It's Gwen Sands finished that one off. Ooh, that was a, a rough one, too. 13-9 in favor of the Lady Trojans looking to even this matchup. So Mohawk Trav is slated to take on Kerry. Yep, that 13th. would be a district. Oh, the 13th. Okay, regular season regular still. Season, last game of the year. So that could be a district championship. Mohawk still Mohawk. has, they play Cary, or they play Colonel Crawford, excuse me, tonight. Then they play Cary on Thursday. So That Northern mm -hmm. 10 is so deep, yeah, too. You have multiple finish. teams. Seneca East, Mohawk, Colonel Crawford, Cary. I mean, Buckeye Central, Buckeye they're Central. 9 and 10, but, like, they're still they, uh, they a fighting squad. They played a Tufts. They're the four seed in the Willard district with St. Paul and Seneca East. Is that... Swing, blocked and down. You could feel the thud of that up here. Yeah, that, that district is Seneca East 1, Monroeville 2, St. Paul 3, Buckeye Central 4. Cross shot, too strong, and out. 
It's a three-point set here. Lady Freddy's won the first set. Now Sinnerberg got the early advantage here, 14 to 11, up three, with a chance to continue their dominance here in the Cam Act. They've only been beaten by Cardington, but talk about a big block right here by Rose. Get that cheese out of here, Trav. Yeah. Is it uh, Gouda, Limburger, American, Swiss? Pepper Jack's by far my favorite, Ooh, Trav. Solid. I like the cubes. You know, when you got a meat yeah. and cheese tray, those the are the Pepper go Jack to. cubes are fire. <laughs> Try going down the line, but a little bit out. And now Fredericktown right back at you. It's 14-13. And what a momentum swing it would be as Centerberg will take a timeout. And while we have a moment, let's thank our sponsors the ones who allowed us to bring these matches to you live and free this and pretty much every evening. Tonight's high school volleyball broadcast brought to you live and free on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors. Alumni Roofing, a full-service commercial roofing contractor providing commercial and industrial roofing solutions. Park National Bank, where you mean more. G you mean more. I love it. CES Credit Union, everyone is working for your best interest at CES Credit Union, your local choice for all of your financial needs. The Cobuck Savings Bank, community banking, it's what we do, it's who we are every single day. And Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Thank you, each and one of you sponsors, for allowing us to bring this and all high school sporting events live and free unless it's a state championship or Final Four when it's live and delayed. But still, we're delayed and free, but we're still free. <laughs> still free. That was a great call, Trav. That was a great ad read. I'm trying to get better. That I try to work on that. Thank you, sir. And I've gotten it down, like, during timeouts, a minute timeout or something. I can get it read quick enough to where it comes right back. As that mistake into the net and Centerberg back up two. I'm just trying to do my best, man. Just trying to get better every day. It's the kind of mentality that I love to hear. Absolutely. I mean, we get paid to call sports. It's, it's fun. Big reception, nearly an overpass, but somehow free ball back over the center bird. Weisbrod adjusts. But center bird will get another shot. Back set. Sands. Yes. Actually, it's Kennedy Glenn. Fredericktown had narrowed down this lead trap to just one, but coming out of the timeout, I believe they had that service there, and then Centerberg able to get their lead back Ugh. to three, but then another service there, except this time on the Lady Trojans. We don't intentionally try to jinx both teams, just to let you folks at home know, and in the air. <laughs> We have people watching from an airplane. That's just, that's a new one. Dinked over by Glenn. Back to Fredericktown. Somehow gets across. Nice dig there, but it gives another chance for Centerberg. But it's too strong. The hand-eye coordination that yeah. these volleyball players have, I just, I would not even come close, man. Julia Partington with that dig, Trev. I mean, that was, that was a heat-seeking missile coming down. Speaking of heat-seeking <laughs> missiles, <laughs> St Stella. My goodness. Yeah, ain't nobody getting that one, Trev. No, no. Uh, that might have left an imprint on the floor down there. Lady Trojans by two. Looking to even this match up, they get a free ball. They'll get a chance to extend. Set up for Weisbro. Yes. When she gets going, that's that's what makes this Centerberg team so complete. We've seen Sands and Marshall already, but when Weisbro makes that trifecta of scores, Centerberg's pretty darn unbeatable. But the Lady Freddy's only down three, have a chance to cut into that. Dinked over, yes. Still waiting for the yummy ball, Trav. I know, not a lot of yummies. That means this has been pretty clean of a match. 
has great sights with the kill. So it's pretty hard up here to read these numbers from Fredericktown because it's Storm had the a little same red complaint. outline. Storm had the same complaint last time we were here. And that's nothing against Fredericktown, but it's just, you know, it, it looks cool. It's just sometimes it's hard for the media members to read. But, I mean, who, they don't really we care about eyes. the media. We got bad I, eyes. You should see how thick my glasses are. I mean, <laughs> nonetheless, Centerberg got the point back. 1916, Fredericktown, Sipes off the block. And no way getting it back over. Lady Trojans five points away from evening this match. Now I want crab cakes, man. Brian, Pepper Jack is by far the best cheese. A little fire, but not too much to don. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And the OH Report founder and CEO, Brian Skaronsky, his vote is on Mohawk because he was the DJ of the Mohawk. Well, we can talk about it now. He DJed along with Jory Skaronsky, the, the Mohawk homecoming dance one I saw videos those kids know how to dance and I heard rumors that they're creating a winter dance just so the OH report can go back and DJ it but he saw the volleyball players and they have some studs up there and that is his vote for one of the best teams in the area you know I've never had crap they got some Trev. I had oh Brian and I when we went to Rod Woodson's football camp yeah. Not only did we get to hang out for four days with NFL Hall of Famers, Rod Woodson, you know, his family and everything, but the last night we went to this steakhouse. And I'm just telling you, two schmucks like us did not deserve to be in that place. It was really ritzy. And we sat down in this private dining room in the back with everybody. There's about 20 of us. And they brought out five or six appetizers for everybody. Mm. And then they had, you know, the what you wanted to order, and they were crab cakes. They were Three See, inches thick, perfectly rounded. The best. I mean, I thought I was in, I was in Maryland. It was so delicious. I was in a food coma after that. It's that overpass, too strong, and Centerberg up 22-16. But man, you get, if you're at the beach, or if you you know you're you're in for like some seafood, you gotta get yourself at least try some crab cakes. I never had crab. Really? Never had lobster. I've, my only like seafood that I really enjoy is shrimp. Uh, love me some popcorn shrimp. Yes. Yeesh! Weisbrod with some popcorn shrimp off of that one. Centerberg two points away from tying this up. That was ripped. Good night. You know you're not you're not you're not touching that. There's no shot with the kind of velocity coming down there from Weisbrod, and she's shown her dominance here late in the late stages of this set, Trav. In system for Fredericktown. Too strong, though, will have set point. And you know what else I like about this match? Both teams already know their fate in the conference. They already know their seeding. But since it's a rivalry match, they're still going 150 miles an hour at each other. Okay, I you can love that. You can feel the intensity up here, Trav. Too strong. And we're tied up. Centerberg takes set number two, 25-16. And we're even at one. We'll take a break. You're watching High School Volleyball Live and Free on the OH Report. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience.
We're even at a set apiece in Freddie Berg, part two. 25-17, Fredericktown took set one. 25-16, Centerberg takes set two. Travis Berardi alongside the illustrious Garrett Parlett. I haven't had a chance to say that, so I'm going to say it every time I get it. Because I call, I try to call Storm the illustrious. He's, no, that's it's just G. It's just <laughs> G, son. But this has been high octane volleyball for two teams that are just you know trying to maintain momentum going into the tournament, which starts next week. I was a bit surprised that Fredericktown came out, you know, lights out, won that first set so commanding, you know, in such a high command that they did. And then for Centerberg, I kind of figured that they'd wake up after that one. They kind of, you know, got their legs back underneath them. They dominated towards the end of that, towards the end of that second set. They kind of pulled away. And now we're all squared at one, Trav, and it's a best of three. We got a moment. Let's take a look at our schedule for the rest of the week. We do have uh, scratch the volleyball. Colonel Crawford Upper Sandusky. So this is the only volleyball match we will have this week. But we added another soccer match down at Granville. The Granville squad will have live and free. But we have four more, well, five more soccer matches after tonight. Lutheran West Ontario, that by the illustrious Storm Blunchley. He is taking highlights of that. But then uh, we go to football Friday night slash Saturday. And I know the biggest matchup that you're looking for is up in Norwalk. You'll be there. Yeah, I'm excited for that one, Trav. On Saturday night, a lot of people will be there. It'll be biggest game of this week, at least in my opinion. Crestview and St. Paul going for the Firelands Conference, both undefeated in conference play. Uh, another great rival we get to see between these two. It was a turn of a, a, turn of a king last year. Crestview finally knocked off St. Paul. They're the new kings of the Firelands Conference. But is the Flyers going to derail them on Saturday. Make sure you tune in. I'll be on the call. Well, also a big one that we now, I guess, is upset alert. Upper Sandusky carry. <laughs> Hayden Gray, and I know I saw yeah, you, I saw you clapping. I saw you <laughs> clapping after he said it, but uh, Upper Sandusky who put 30 up on Colonel Crawford. Colonel Crawford only yeah. allowed seven on carry. So is this offense for real by Upper Sandusky, or did they just, you know, catch some breaks listen they were my pick to win the northern 10 and i know that they're they're not going to but i thought that they had the offense to do so i believe their quarterback is caden holman mm -hmm. and you know he leads the in 10 in passing yards he's up there with blake foos so you know that offense taking on a stingy carry defense i didn't expect carry to be as good as they were i figured they'd be a great team but i didn't think they'd be like they were i mean they're, they're blowing teams out they beat Colonel Crawford, who's one of the better teams, too. So that's going to be a great matchup. I don't know if I'd go as far as say that Upper Sandusky, though, would win that one. Well, we'll find out. We'll have highlights on the Friday night pigskin. Friday night, 1130, live and free on the OH Report is Fredericktown. Out in front here in set number three, one nothing on the alumni roofing scoreboard. I will be at Centerburg as the Trojans look to clinch at least a share of the K-Mac against the Golden Knights, but I'm hearing some rumors that Max Lauer might be back for the Golden Knights. That could change a lot of things defensively and offensively, and I know they're going to need him defensively against Kalen LeMaster and Tyler Johnson as that's blocked and down. As Fredericktown takes it to a lead, and then you, with Brian Skaronski, will be right back here at Fredericktown. Yeah, I'll be in Freddy Land. I'll be in K-Mac Land. So I don't get to call a lot of, or be at a lot of K-Mac, you know, contests because... We got you. That's why you're the Big Mac, big, big league, uh, K Mac Berardi. So it'd be I great to like see Fredericktown. I haven't got to see their football program. I don't think since I've started uh, working here. Tegan so. Rule. That's the name you I've need to look at. I've heard the out. name. Kate so. Carpenter, who's one of the best baseball players I remember in him the from area. Baseball. Yeah, he's he's a good wide receiver. Ben Mass, the quarterback, but Tegan Rule can take over a game. He's one of those playmakers. The team that's surprising me is Loudonville in the K-Max. That's too strong. We're tied at two. I feel like Lownville, ever since well, I was younger, I used to go to Lownville. I feel like ever since I left that school, they've always been like. I mean, they're great in girls basketball, making it to regionals this like, year. But a lot of people doubt them coming into the season during like for football. But they always get like <laughs> four or five wins where teams they're not, they're not supposed to beat. As you see, a heck of a shot right there from the Lady Freddies. Jillian. And you saw her celebrate after that. Why not on the, the back slide? That's a back When she goes behind, 
it's called a backslide when she goes in front. It's a front slide, but she goes around the setter. So there's another one for you, my friend. That's lodged in there, Trav. That is a backslide and a kill. And that's a block as the Lady Freddies get the two-point lead. But, yeah, Loudonville with a couple big wins. Uh, field goal victory over Fredericktown. Um, I believe they beat they Mount beat Gilead. Hillsdale. They beat Hillsdale, who's on Rolling. fire right now. They'll have a big one. So that's not deflected. It hit off the net and went out, so another point for the Lady Freddies. Yeah, they, they can... They are going up against the WCAL leaders in Northwestern on Friday night. If they can beat them, then all they take on is a two-win uh, Rittman squad. They beat them, they win WCAL and probably clinch a top four seed in that D7 Region 25 with the likes of St. Paul and Lucas, who they lost to, Warren JFK. And that's huge playing on their turf, two home games. Centerberg looking to get back into that. And that's just one of those, you see... <laughs> As uh, Katie Johnson laughing about that. She, I'm just trying to get that back over the net. And instead, she gets the kill, 5-3. Dalton went for the block right there. Didn't get you know enough on it to send it back down onto the floor. So was able to drop on the side of Lady Freddy's. As you see a spike here. That's from Dalton once again as they go up 6-3 on the CES Credit Union replay. 90% of the time when it's set perfectly in front of one of these players, it's gonna go down for a kill. And that might be one of the 10% right there against Glenn. And it's returned off the tip and down. Fredericktown up four. And you talk about important sets. Set three in an even match is the most important. I could see that. Because then you get that, that little bit of wiggle room when if you don't even get four, you get back, right. you still have a chance to win it in five. While the other side, they would have to sweep the rest of the match to get victory. Overpass. Fredericktown into the net, though, and Centerberg gets the break. So that's something else. Sometimes you'll see if a spike goes into the net and then back out and they hit it again, it's going to be four, four hits. However, if the other side gets a piece of it off the block, then it resets. And at first they gave Centerberg the point, but then they said net violation. You see his hand went over completely to the net. So Fredericktown gets the four-point lead. Those rules around the net are netty. <laughs> Weissbrod, <laughs> off speed. Back down the middle, we're still alive here. Let G collect himself. Change of pace point there. That's the first time we've seen a power set like that get over. Normally the setter will just, you know, get it back, but sometimes they will push it over the net that completely throw you off, and that was timed right where they wanted. A double chance at the yummy, but still it drops down. That was two people fighting for dinner right there. You normally don't like to see that, G, but as you see on the replay, it still worked out. It's like you and Storm fighting for the last Big Mac in the box. Dude, Big Macs are phenomenal. Yes, they are. You got to be thinking about dinner now. I, as well. I only had a peanut butter sandwich for food today, so. That's into the net. So, Fredericktown really taking control of this. We may see a timeout from Centerberg coming up as they trail by seven. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get this to the likes of 15-4. Want to try to stop this momentum from the Lady Freddies as that one just barely gets over the top of the net on Let that serve. Ball. And it's too strong, and we will see a timeout by Centerberg. So a let ball, that's when it hits the net, takes almost all the momentum, and somehow it still crawls over the net into the let other ball. side. Let ball. Let ball. Mm -hmm. 
12? Man, Storm's not going to know what to do, Trav, the next time we call a game. I'm going to have all these terms. He's going to be so impressed. <laughs> Tonight's high school volleyball broadcast brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Alumni Roofing, a full-service commercial roofing contractor providing commercial and industrial roofing solutions. Park National Bank, where you mean more. CES Credit Union. Everyone is working for your best interest at CES Credit Union, your local choice for all your financial needs. The Killbuck Savings Bank. Community banking. It's what we do. It's who we are every single day. And Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. Thank you all, sponsors, for allowing us to bring these almost always live and always free right here on the OH Report. I also want to welcome everybody watching in live and free on Facebook and YouTube. Let us know where you're watching from, as if it's on the ground, on a boat, in an airplane, I don't, in a car, other than driving. Don't be driving and watching us right now. You might be listening to us, but don't be driving and watching. It's a no-no. Any others? I don't know. Flying, driving, swimming, boating. I think you, got, I think you crossed, crossed every single one off your list, Trav. Maybe a dude's watching in the Goodyear blimp. Who knows? Just inside the back line, and Fredericktown adds on. They're up nine here in set number three. What a run here for the Lady Freddies. Commanding lead. Could be double digits if they're able to cash in here on this serve. It's going to be a free ball to Fredericktown. Dinked, stays alive. Weisbrod off the block. Wow. Instead of even setting, it, it, it kind of worked like a set. There was one spot that Fredericton needed to put it on the floor that Centerberg couldn't get it, Trav, and they were able to hit that spot. Ten point lead here in set three. And they'll get a chance to add on. Overpass, though, and the error gets Centerberg back on the board. It's 14-5 on the alumni roofing scoreboard. I keep looking for comments, and the first thing I see is pepper jack cheese. Dude, it's the it's best. It is good. It, it, yeah. Get some Ritz crackers with it. Maybe a piece of uh, salami or ham. Is that's blocked down. Me, me and Storm had this debate. It was actually at the last Centerberg game, Trav, uh, about Ritz crackers or saltines. I guess it depends on the situation. I, I'd use Ritz for almost Thank everything. Thank you. Thank that's you. into the net, and Centerberg gets it back. Saltines would be... Well, here was another thing. Storm said that when, like, so, like, at holidays and parties and stuff that uh -huh. he goes to, like, there's veggie trays. Yeah. And, like, I didn't know that they put, like, so, like, a veggie tray, like, celery, carrots. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that they Cucumber. put saltines yep. with those. You, because, like, people will eat cucumbers with just dumping salt on it to, like, change the flavor of it. So, with vegetables like that, yes, they, that saltines would work if you want something, like, you'd get with cheese, meat, gotcha. and Ritz crackers. Now, like the That's the only time, though. Like the club crackers? Ooh, those are butter incredible. clubs? Oh, yes. Good grief. As a kid, my grandmother would have a couple boxes, and I'd eat like a sleeve at a yeah. time. And somehow I stayed skinny back then. <laughs> Centerberg finishes that off with some cheese. 16 to 7. Um, Lunchables. That, that just reminds me of Lunchables back in the day as a kid. Lunchables are fire. The crackers nice and stuff. Meal. You get a little candy bar, chocolate on the side as well. I was a Lunchables pizza guy, though. Oh, no, Trav. Although, like, I, I like the mall. Yeah. I mean, the, the nachos. Nachos were little, good. The little Those sauce, were underrated. The little cheese, yes. So but I, I, used to I eat mean, the OG, the OG Lunchables is the f my first. But I, I like the pizza, and I really like the nachos, too. I used to eat those on two days. Ah, yes. Like football practice. Overpass, Joust. And I think that got deflected off of Fredericktown. Nope. They're going to say deflected off of Centerberg last. And the Lady Freddies will get the point. So everything going the way of the Lady Freddies here. 
Actually, no, they changed it now. So now it is 17 to 8. I got that wrong. Well, Fredericktown just got the 18, Trav, so. I don't have to change it. You don't have to change you. anything. Freddie's making me look smarter now. They look like a completely different team from that second set. Centerberg came out and dominated that one. And now the Lady Freddies beginning to pull away in this one, but this will go in favor. Kennedy Glenn. Of Glenn and the Freddies as they cut this down to just nine. Almost got the block, but the ball just curved a little too much into the net and stayed on the side of Fredericktown. Weissbrode, blocked. Another chance for her. This time off the block, stays alive. Dink right back at you, and Centerberg will get the point. Great hustle from Fredericktown, just not able to get it over top of Centerberg. Big block. See, now you got me thinking about coaches bar and grill. So when I was doing two-a-days, right literally down the block from our school, is a, a little, little bar and grill called Coaches, and actually our former coach who had 100 wins at Bishop Donahue, he runs it. And That's before cool. every two-a-days, we'd, we'd write down orders, and then they'd go pick it up in between. So I'd have my, my chicken, crispy chicken sandwich and some fries and, a couple, and two Mountain Dews. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that was – That is some cheese, Trev. I, 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 honestly, I usually never ate. Because I would usually, uh -huh. you know, get sick. Yeah, yeah. So I usually just didn't eat, or I would eat some fruit to give myself some energy. But if I did eat, it was lunchable. But you're over here getting dinners and chicken sandwich. <laughs> well, the way we had it set up is that's too strong. Now, Centerberg, just like that, back in this, down six. Um, we do our, our hitting and everything the first session. Second session was more learning and, learning and stuff. So my mom would pack it. We had the little mini Gatorades, and I pack in my little, you know, my cooler. But then I, in between, I get, because it was only like a total of like seven bucks for all, all right. of that. So, yeah, coaches still, still open, even though the school isn't anymore. Coaches still down there. Great, great place to eat. A little hole in the wall. You know, those hole in the walls are the best place. Perfect. Places. Big swing too strong. Now the Lady Freddies, five points away. I'm going up 2-1. I think if you're further down 2, got to try to get this over as quick as possible because, you know, Centerberg, they're, they're trying to get back in this game, and they're too good of a team to let hang around and let even have a ch attempt to get back. As <laughs> wow, what a big block from the Lady Freddies right here. Boom. That coming from Maya Bryant and Lillian Rose. We also had a block by Grace Sipes earlier, Regina Sipes saying good block, Grace. Thanks for watching. Nearly an ace, but it will turn into it on an air. Double hit. 22 to 12. So just like that, a 4-0 run has the Lady Freddies up 10. First matchup between these two, Trav. I believe you were there. It was in four sets. And it was close, too. This mm -hmm. one, this we've one. had two sets that, well, actually both sets early on have not been as close. Perfect play. Fredericktown can't miss in this set. They've been picking their spots, and they've been pretty accurate when doing so. I mean, they're putting in places where Centerberg's not able to get to it and see if Bowden can continue serving back there up some aces. Big swing by Rose stays alive. Weissbrode. Overpass, yummy, flipped right back at her, though. I mean, they can't do anything wrong right now, Trev. Bryant with the block again. It looked like Centerberg had the yummy ball, but perfectly timed block, and it's set point. 12 set points for the Lady Freddies. Weissbrode, blocked, stays alive, though. This will be a free ball. Fredericktown with a chance to finish out set three right here. Yes! Lady Freddies with an exclamation point on set number three. 
They take it 25-12 and lead it two sets to one. We'll take a break. See if the Lady Freddies can win it in set number four. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. I'm Travis Big League Berardi. Catch me every week with my Country Roads rankings. We'll go over the small school top 10 football schools here in the area. Back at center, not Centerburg, that was a couple weeks ago. Back at Fredericktown High School for senior night is the Lady Freddies leading two sets to one with the 25-12 victory in set number two. And G-Man, we were talking about food for most of that set, and it seems like Fredericktown wants to get home for dinner because they took care of business as they're one set away from a win. Yeah, look completely different than they did in that first set. More, look more like the team that they were in that first set. The second set, Centerbird just absolutely was able to pull away and get a big one. But we're in for a good finish here, Trav. Centerbird, they won the first matchup between these two schools, 3-1. to one, And now if Centerbird wants a chance to win this, it's going to have to go to a decisive set five because Fredericktown just one more win away from taking this one here at senior night. This might be a little bit more, imp I mean, it's important for both sides. I'll say that first, but maybe a little bit more important for Fredericktown yeah. just because their path in the tournament. They get a sectional semi and a sectional final before probably taking on the number one seed in their district. In Fairbanks. They have to take care of the tw number 20 seed and number 22 seed to get to Mount Vernon Nazarene University, where then they would face the number one seed, Fairbanks. Now, Centerburg, the highest seed they would face in a district semi would be an eight or a nine seed. So, you know, getting that momentum at the end of the season, getting into the tournament, it'd be good. It'd be a little bit of a better win for the Lady Freddies than the Lady Trojans. Also, it would clinch a tie for second for Fredericktown as well. See if Centerburg changes anything up here in this four set. Fredericktown just looking for one more set win to pull out of here on senior night with a big win. You know what, another factor from that first match was the Centerburg student section. It was packed, they were going crazy and I think it helped with the momentum. A Little bit of a quieter atmosphere here in Fredericktown. And it's helped out the Lady Freddies tonight. Big swing off the set, the bump. And they get the first point. Everything was working for Fredericktown in that third set trap. We mentioned a couple times. I mean, wherever it was hit, it was landing in a spot where no Trojan was able to get a hold of it there. Uh, another opportunity to do so, and they cash in. As they start off the scoring here and set 4 one nothing here at Fredericktown early. Sands with the free ball. Returned right back to Centerburg. Cross court off the net, and they're going to call it four hits. So Lady Freddie didn't touch it there. And it'll be a 2-0 lead. Dinked off the block, though. Fredericktown has completely controlled the net. As I say that, Kennedy Glenn gets past the block and down for the point, but... The net play from Fredericktown tonight has been great. Yeah, they've been tremendous up front, Trav. Lillian Rose 
as well as Jillian Belton and Maya Bryant. They've been really the big three, you could say, up there, you know, blocking a lot of shots. And then Belton has done tremendous when she's had spike opportunities. So Fredericktown playing an all-around game as this one, however, will go in favor of the Trojans. Got the ace. Tie this, tie this one up at deuces. Just enough English on that to prevent a return. Two all. But as I say that, right back at you, service error. For Fredericktown, in my opinion, Trav, you don't want this to go five. Like, no. You, you want, if, you, if you want to win this, you want to get this out of the way here and set four. Because you know you respect the kind of team that Centerberg is, a very tough team, a great team coming in here on the road. If they get this to five, it's going to go be a toss-up game. But if they can you know, pull this out in four, it would bode well for them as they go up four two. Double hit. Gets the point to Fredericktown. Let ball, stays alive, back set, big swing blocked, and it's a point. Wow, we just talked about that net play, and it continues here. Jillian Bouton's had a phenomenal night, the junior playing here. So that's deflected, and it will be a point for Centerberg. Take a look at the replay. Yep, that, that did deflect and go up a little bit higher. 5-3. Finally able to get it past some of those girls up there on net for Fredericktown. Centerberg was with a spike. We've seen a couple players for Centerberg be able to cash in on those spike opportunities, but it really hasn't been there all night as another big spike here from the Lady Freddies, and this one will drop. Sipes once again. She loves that left side. 6-3. And another one of those dropping serves. Now, Travis, was that a campfire or no? It didn't drop, yeah, technically. It, yeah, you could say it was as Centerberg takes the timeout. It wasn't nearly in the middle, though. It was towards the feet, but you could still call it that, yeah. Good eye. Yes, Good eye, G. It's my first time I've ever got a <laughs> call like that, Trev. All right, let's take a look at the schedule once again. Are you anywhere tomorrow, G? I don't think anybody is anywhere tomorrow, actually. Uh, I'm not. No. No, we have – well, we have – we're shooting our all of our segments yep. and everything, so you'll see that this week. But our soccer schedule, Lutheran Western Ontario, that highlights tonight. We have Ashland at Clear Fork, Madison Mansell Christian, Bowling Green Lexington – uh, Madison Mansfield Christian will be live, hopefully live and free from Mansfield Christian if we can get a signal. Worthington Christian, Mansfield Christian also will be live on Saturday. And at Mount Vernon Mansfield Senior, Shelby Clear Fork, Northmore Centerburg, Cardington Fredericktown, Bucyrus Buckeye Central on Friday night will be live. Pleasant Galleon, Upper Sandusky Carry will be highlighted. And then the game we were talking about earlier, Crestview at St. Paul will be live. Lot. A lot of stuff going on, as always, always here at the OH Report. Another game I'm keeping my eye on is that Baby Goat versus the Goat game, Travis. Ah, uh, Shelby and Clear Fork. Yeah, exciting storylines on that versus one. Skoog. Baby Goat versus Storm's best friend. <laughs> Centerberg out of the timeout. Gets a, I think it's the first time tonight that Centerberg's capitalized on a timeout. First or second. That's too strong, so too straight. That was a good timeout by head coach Abigail Boudinot. I thought last time she called it drive around, I believe it was 12-4, and Cinderberg wasn't able to rally. Elected this time to call it a little bit earlier. So far it's boding well in their favor. Is This one blocked from Lillian and Rose and company, but doesn't matter. Lands on their side. Cinderberg will be awarded the point. Weisbrod off. The deflection makes it 7-6. And that's an ace. We're tied. Lady Trojans on a run and have to even set number four when they needed it the most. Just inside the line. Bella Mullins thought it was going to be too strong, but did not. It stayed in. Quick set wow. turns into... A point eight ball corner pocket. I mean, this one's just dropping one right on the money. It's a little floater for yeah. you. 
Tony Parker. <laughs> Eight seven, Lady Freddie's lead. Back set, Weisbrod again. Gets off the block for the point. We're tied at eight. Short serve. Overpass, yummy. And it will turn into a point. There's the yummy for you, G. Finally, we got a yummy ball, Chav. I've been waiting for it all night. It finally happens, and Sarenberg's able to capitalize off of it. Marshall served a nice plate of chicken spaghetti there. Ooh. But the announcer, Jinx, gives it right back. Yeah. Went back home. Mom made some chicken, her patented chicken spaghetti. I've never had chicken so in it, my it, spaghetti, Chav. So, but well, it, this, I love it's chicken, It's a different though. type, so it's... It's uh, chicken breast, spaghetti noodles, as you know. So is it like chicken parm? No. I got to continue here after this point. This will be down the middle. Block stays alive. Fredericktown with a chance to get the lead back. Instead, it's a free ball. Down the middle for Centerberg. Marshall whiffs on it, and Fredericktown leads. So you get your, your chicken breast, you yep. get your spaghetti noodles, cream of chicken, cream of mushroom soup, Velveeta cheese. 16 Ooh. ounces of Velvia cheese, throw it in a crock pot. Cube up the chicken breast, throw it in a crock pot for like three hours. That shot's too strong. It's 11-9. It is delicious. I, gotta, I had it, I I had it Sunday I had it Sunday night for dinner, and then before I left for the podcast yesterday, I had it for lunch as well. Oh, and chicken broth too. Marshall this time keeps it inside the line. We're tied, well, not tied, but it's a one point game. 11 10. Set up for a good finish here, Trev. Absolutely, G. This is what you want at the end of the year. Back line. Marshall tried to adjust, but too strong. And Fredericktown back up two. The Lady Freddies came to play today. You know, a, lot, a lot of storylines coming into this one, but they've shown a lot on the floor You know, of a great team coming out here against Centerberg and kind of being in control the entirety of the game other than the, that second set in the late stages, Centerberg pulled away. But doing a great job at Centerberg. Fantastic dig from the Freddies with this one. We'll go out of play, and the Trojans cut it down to one. That time Marshall was teed up on it and was able to swing. Uh, also, for you folks uh, thinking about changing over to the Guardians game, they're through one inning, it's scoreless, so there's your update. You don't have to change yet. Centerberg back into the net, so Fredericktown once again up by two. You have plenty of time to watch the Guardians after this match is over. It's Freddie Berg. Why maybe wouldn't maybe you I'll watch, watch some of the Guardians tonight, Trav. Maybe At I'll least listen to Tom Hamilton. Now he I do love his calls. baseball game. I listened to him on the ride home yes, on Saturday. That was the 15-inning game. I actually was able to drive all the way back to the Ohio River, stayed at my mom's for about an hour to watch the game, and then drove up to the to Ogilvy Fest, the, beer, the uh, October Fest in Wheeling, and still the game hadn't ended. So I was able to listen to the smooth tones of Tom Hamilton for the whole ride. It was a very peaceful ride, too. He's, he's one of the best. I remember his call when Rajay Davis hit that home run so, uh, against the Cubs. Brian and I would know this. We were at the game in the media section is <laughs> Bouton. She easily able to get that as the defense went to one side. Just nice, easy swing to the back corner. She made it look easy all night. Yeah. But, yeah, we were in the auxiliary press box down the right field line, and when we saw that, a uh, lot of jaws dropped. Could imagine. Centerberg can get back to within one. Back set, swing, yes. Clara Johnson makes it 14-13. 
Centerberg fighting here. Will not be denied just yet, Trav. Fredericktown's had their chance to pull away, but Lady Trojan's not letting them. Here's her down to just one point separating these two. Is this one will go in favor? I believe that's Sipes. Yes, Once it again, is. cashing in, make this 15-13. Right down that line, too. Just enough where you had to force the attempt. 15-13. Short serve, and it turns into an ace. So this is now the largest lead of the set, three points. And I think Centerberg thought that was going to be a let ball, Trav, but it, it, didn't, it didn't really hang on the net. It kind of just kind of nicked it. That still counts. It hit the net. It's a let. Freddy's in system to the back line, stays alive. Weisbrod with a running start. Instead takes a little off of it. Whew. What a miss hit. 16-14. Kennedy Glenn will serve. Stay tuned after the match for the Park National Bank MVP. Cross shot finished. Lillian Rose. And how many of those cross shots has Fredericktown you know, been able to find a spot for those? We've seen a couple from Sipes and now Rose getting into the mix with those. And the ability to just keep it inside the line as well. Volleyball, one of the biggest sports in my opinion that you know bodes well on you know, runs, momentum, and... Oh, yeah. And now, Fredericktown, biggest lead of the set here, Trav, 18-14. It's been a back-and-forth game all day. Let's see if the Freddies can pull this out. They need just seven. Almost an overpass. Looked like that might have been a hand over the net. Let's take a look at the replay. It was close. But the referees say it was legal, and it's 18-15. Power set over. And finds the corner. Fredericktown six points away. Marshall off the block, stays alive, dinked over. Marshall again. But Fredericktown with the finish. A setup right there. Got a spike attempt on it. Centerberg was able to block it, but it stayed on their side. And now, and an ace. An ace here for the Freddies as they're smelling victory trap just four points away in Centerburg. They need a timeout. 21-15. So take a look at the ace one more time. Centerburg with their timeout. Let's thank our sponsors one more time. Tonight's volleyball broadcast brought to you live and free on EOH Report. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Alumni Roofing, a full-service commercial roofing contractor providing commercial and industrial roofing solutions. Park National Bank, where you mean more. CES Credit Union, everyone is working for your best interest. At CES Credit Union, your local choice for all your financial needs. As Fredericktown's needs are being met right now, 22-15. Yeah, Trav, they won't even let you get through the entire... I'm going to finish right here. Killbuck Savings Bank, community banking. It's what we do. It's who we are every single day as that one's too strong. And finally, Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. But They're trying to get out of here, Trav. Huh? They're trying to get out of here quick. They went on a, a dinner bell, man. Decent run here. But I believe they said that one went out of play, Trav. 
So yep, too Center strong. A chance here, but are they going to call that in? They will not. We're getting a little miscommunication, and they're going to give it to him, Trav. They're going to give it to Fredericktown. I thought initially, without replay, I thought it did go in. Uh, I thought it was in play. Pushed over. Big swing blocked, but out. Wow. Match point for the Freddies. Taylor Bryant with a chance to finish this one off. Into the net, it's over. Fredericktown wins it on senior night. They take match two of the Freddie Berg series. Three sets to one. We'll take a break. Be back with our Park National Bank MVP and some final analysis live and free on the OH Report. The match may be over, but we are still here with our post-game show MVP, final analysis, and much more coming your way next. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. At the Killbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Number one receiver coming from the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey. He's caught our attention over here, and we're certainly going to keep an eye on the Willard Flashes. We will see you next week on the Stat Leaders Brought to you by Spencer of Mansfield. Time now for our Park National Bank Player of the Game, and it is Fredericktown Jr. Jillian Bouton. First of all, congratulations, Jillian. Uh, this is a big win for you guys. You know, you lost in four sets at Centerburg. You come back, beat them in four sets. What did you learn from that first match that you were able to use in this one to get the victory? Um, our block wasn't very like strong during the first game, so we really worked on practice this week. Really getting that block up and making sure our passes weren't getting killed. Um, you know, senior night, it's always a big night for your seniors to go out on a high note. And not only that, it being a rivalry match, just uh, one, did that help you guys, you know, get 
get motivated to try and get the win, especially in that first set? And two, um, just how does it feel to get those seniors out on a win in their final home yeah, contest? Yeah, it feels really good. Uh, it's their last game at game, so we really just pushed really hard to make sure they had a good memory as their last home game here and just making sure they ended on a good note. Um, you know what? Coming up, it's tournament time next week. You guys have – uh, two good tests before getting into districts and possibly playing the number one seed in the district. What you guys want to work on, you know, end of the year here and then those first two sectional games to get ready for a tough district? Um, definitely making sure our swings are more in bounds. We kind of hit a lot of balls out of bounds. And our block's really good because they have some really good hitters and making sure our service team is on point. Um, you guys, you know, a 2019 you won a district championship before that. It was 2002. How important would it be for you guys, you know, especially with a lot of players that will be returning next year, to make a run like this, you know, for, for the squad, maybe get another number on that banner? Yeah, we really just want to focus on making a deep run and sending our seniors out knowing they did something well for this community and the school. And, you know, if things work out, you might be seeing Centerburg in a district championship <laughs> yeah. as well, which, you know, that would be great for everybody. Uh, lastly, as always, if you want to look in the camera, give anybody a shout-out that you'd like, go for it. Um, I want to thank my family and my friends and all the supporters and of the Fredericton community. All right, Jillian Bouton, tonight's Park National Bank MVP. Congratulations and good luck in the tournament. Thank you. All righty, that will... Wrap things up for tonight as we thank Jillian Bouton. I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible tonight. First off, you know, Garrett Parlett is always great job tonight. Keaton Cooper on the camera. Everybody back at BS Media Productions. Our scoreboard sponsor, Alumni Roofing. CES Credit Union, our replay sponsor. Park National Bank, our MVP sponsor. Our commercial sponsors, Killbuck Savings Bank and Knox Community Hospital. Want to thank Brian Skaronsky, Jory Hollenbeck, Adam Thompson, Storm Blunchley, and Hayden Gray back at the OH Report. Want to thank the fine folks here at Fredericktown High School for allowing us to be here tonight. And most importantly, we want to thank you, the fans, for watching. Fredericktown gets revenge on rival Centerburg. They take Freddie Berg 2.0, 25-17-16-25-25-12-25-16. For the illustrious Garrett Parlett, I'm Travis Berardi saying so long from Fredericktown.